Hey guys, Al Escobedo here with CrossbowExpert.com. We just got in some samples of the new 10-point bows. In front of me here, I got the new 10-point turbo. This has got the Accu Sled 50. We're gonna do a little unboxing video so you, can, you guys can see what it's like to open the box and put it all together. All right, let's cut this box open. Check out what's inside here. So this is gonna be the Turbo M1. You're gonna have your arrows, your three pack of arrows, your foot stirrup. I'm just gonna set everything here on the counter so you can see exactly what we're working with. You got your quiver, quiver assembly. Stock assembly, scope's already mounted. Bow assembly. Our instructions, stickers, hardware. Let me just double check in here to make sure I'm not missing any little parts, but that should be everything. All right guys, so I got everything unpacked here, laid out on my counter so I can have all my parts ready to be put together. Tools that you'll need for sure, a Allen wrench set, there's a few different sizes that you'll need. So if you can get yourself one of these standard sets that has multiple different sizes, that should be able to cover the whole bowl assembly. Then you'll also need a 7 16 wrench. You could use a socket, ratchet, whatever. Um, now remember, new for 2019, here at crossbowexpert.com, we're going to be offering complete assembly on our crossbows if you purchase a crossbow and a case. So you'll be able to find those options on our website. Give us a call. We can get you set up either way. So the first thing I like to do is actually just get the bow attached to the stock assembly. And, you know, everyone does these things in a little bit different order. But so what you'll do here is you take your bow. You got your cable slide. You got to make sure you do, do the cable slide correctly. You lubricate it, put a little wax on there just so that it slides easier in the rail system. It's going to go on. The cable's there. One of the tougher parts here is keeping it on the, the slide on the, the cable slide on the cables while sliding it into the groove. We got it in the groove there. Just slide the bowl in, obviously. Get, you want the, the cable slide in the groove, string on top of the rail. Then if you look here, our riser's got a <clears throat> machined out hole for that stud. That's basically this, where the screw goes to hold that on. So you just line that up and get it in there. And sometimes just because you got the string angle or the string pushing on the rail, you might have to put a little pressure on it. So you just kind of pull the top of the riser towards you as you slide it down got it on there nice and flush we got our assembly bolt lock washer and just your regular washer again all this stuff is included for you you slide that into the the end there get it tightened finger tight grab your allen wrench this is going to be your 3 16 is going to be the size you need for this main bolt here. Screw that in. Okay, so now we got that locked on. So now really the only thing we have left to add on so that the bow is ready to shoot is gonna be the foot stirrup. But with the addition of the foot stirrup, you have to decide if you want to mount the quiver to the bow or if you're just gonna leave the quiver off for shooting. If you wanna use the complete bracket, um, you'll have to do this all at the same time. So you flip the bow over, you got these two locking screws right there. We're gonna actually pull those all the way out because we are gonna put the quiver assembly on this bow. For this, you will need an eighth inch a Allen wrench. Like I said, I'm just going to take these two screws completely out. Take your foot stirrup, make sure the indent is going the proper direction. 
You'll also see that it is machined out here for where the screws will lock down and hold it into place. All right, so we took these studs out that lock down the foot stirrup because we are going to be using the quiver assembly bracket included in your quiver assembly kit for your parts. There are actually a couple different stud sizes here. All right, so for this particular bow, I'm actually going to use the shorter studs. It's going to be a little bit different on every bow. Every riser is a little bit different. Thread those bad boys in there. Your eighth inch Allen. Tighten that down. Now your foot stirrup is attached, solid. Next you'll take this bracket. This bracket is for your ambidextrous quiver bracket mount. So when we slide that on there, we're gonna take our 7 16 wrench our set of nylon locking nuts. All right, so now we're gonna put on the ambidextrous mount for your quiver bracket, which is this guy right here. Now you got to figure out right-handed, left-handed shooter. Um, easy way to do this for guys that haven't done it before. Your bracket's going to sit basically at this angle on the bow or this angle on the bow. So you just got to hold up the bow and kind of take a look. I'm right-handed shooter, so I want it to go off of the right side of the bow so it's not in my way. This bracket needs two Phillips head screws, your Phillips screwdriver. Put my screws in like so. All right, so now we got that attached here to the bottom of that bracket we just put on with the foot stirrup screws. Just like so, out of my way when I'm shooting, right-handed shooter. So next, we mount the actual quiver bracket, which we got here, and the two screws, two Phillips screws. And what we're going to do is we're going to put this lever, the locking lever, forward on the side of your arm here. There's two holes. We're just going to line that up. So the quiver bracket looks just like that on there. Put your Phillips in there. So the next part we have, I'm actually just going to set this off to the side here for a second. I'm going to show you all the parts we have here for your quiver. So we got the quiver itself from 10 point. They do come disassembled. Um, because they line up a little bit different on every bow, but I'll show you how to assemble that. You got a piece of rubber tubing, and what this does, this is for a hanger if you're a guy that likes to take the quiver off when you're hunting. Two push pins to hold this rubber piece in. Then you got your cable or your uh, quiver slide bracket that slides into the plastic mount that we just put on the bow. I always put the rubber stirrup on first because I double check how the quiver is going to line up before I screw on the slide part. So slide it, you just, all you got to do for this part is take that rubber tube, slide it through both ends of these holes, just like so. Take your two push buttons, slide them all the way onto that rubber tube. With a little bit of force, you just slide those right into the locking position. And you're good to go there. You got that all set. So now all we have left with the quiver bracket is the slide and the two screws that hold it. So like I said, every one of all of the 10 point bows come with the same quiver and they all are going to line up a little bit differently across the board. Um, so you're not, it has multiple different adjustment screws on where to line it up. 
So what I generally will do is I'll take the bow here, flip it upside down, kind of eyeball it. Remember, you want to make sure you put this bracket on the correct way. There is a upside down or a, a there are a couple different ways you can put this, but you want it so that the round side is on the bottom to slide right into your locking bracket. I set that in there and this is just eyeball to make sure I get the right fit. So then I li line it up with a couple different screw options. Um, if you've never done this before, you can start wherever, but if you, if you start at the bottom here, that's about where it'll line up with the two screws. You can see that the quiver sticks out further than the foot stirrup. And that's, you don't want to do that because that's going to allow you not to cock the bow with the quiver on. It's just going to be a nightmare. So I take a look and I want, I personally want it so that it's as close to the end of the foot stirrup, but on this side of it as you can, just because not only are you worried about having this too far forward, but the further back you go, the arrows are going to be coming out the backside and you don't want them in your way while you're shooting. So with this particular bow, I think we're gonna go right there. Basically, one screw down. So pull that off, make sure we remember which way is which. Set that down. Realign your quiver and your plastic piece right on the quiver. Just like so. Tighten those up. Double check it here real quick, slide it in, lock it. It's just below the foot stirrup so you can, you'll be able to cock the bow comfortably. It's not too far back where the arrows will be in the way. So I'm just gonna pull that off real quick. So real, realistically, your bow is ready to go. Quiver on the bow. We're pretty much ready to go. We got your bow completely assembled. It's time to take it out to the range and get it sighted in. We're gonna take this Turbo M1 from 10 Point back to our range right now, do some shooting with us. We'll meet you out on the range. All right, guys, we just got done assembling the Turbo M1 from 10 Point, new for 2019. We got it out to our range here. We're gonna take this tag off here. Throw on some rail lube, which is included with your 10 point accessories. If you haven't done this before, this is very important for the life of your string. Basically rip this little tab open, put a little drop on each side of your rail. Take your finger, slide it through there, cover the whole rail. That will really save on the life of your you're serving, add life to your string. So now we got our, our bow is completely ready to shoot. We're set up at 20 yards. Gonna take a few shots and we're gonna show you how to sight in your Turbo M1. So this particular model we have in our hands right here is the Turbo M1 with the AccuDraw 50 sled. Real quick, show you how that works. Safety is always in fire, fire position when you're cocking it. All we do is we pull this sled out, up and over. Hook it on there just like so. Got your handles here. And it'll automatically engage from fire to safety when it's in the cocked position. Slide that back out. Put your handles back in the storage spot. Lock it in. And you're ready to shoot. All right, so we got it in the cocked position. We got it in safe. Now we got to load our arrow. If you've never done this before, Crossbow arrows, for the most part, everyone in the industry, aside from a couple, are gonna have one odd color. That odd color will actually go right inside the rail. And then with every knock, you wanna make sure you got the knock 
index correctly so that it's going perpendicular to the string. Slide that back in there. Make sure you got good tight connection to the string because if you don't, there's an anti dry fire and that'll allow you, that could either allow you your arrow to the string to go over or under your arrow causing a partial dry fire or your bow might not even shoot at all depending on how far into that anti dry fire your arrow is pushed so we got the odd vein down we got the the knock in the correct position we got the arrow tight against the string we are now ready to shoot so this is going to be our first shot. You watched us assemble it. We have not shot this bow yet. This is straight from the factory. Let's see what happens. Not too bad. Looks like we're about I would say three and from here, I would say about three and a half to four inches outside of the X ring. Height looks pretty good. So now I'm gonna show you how to adjust your scope. So you got your turret caps, just like any other scope out there, your crossbow or your rifle scopes. I'm gonna take off the turret caps. When I sight in my bows, I usually just take them both off, set them off to the side so I can make adjustments on the fly as I go. So set my caps, it's up there all the way like i said we're about three and a half four inches to the right so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to go to my turret cap and it actually has arrows that'll tell you which way left is and which way up is so we want our arrow to go to the left so i'm going to turn this dial to the left following the arrow i'll just start there I always tap on the reticle after I make the adjustments just because all the adjustments you're making are extremely fine tuned and just want to make sure that nothing sticks. Cock the bowl and take another shot and see where we're at. All right, still just a touch high, so I am going to bring this down a little bit. That looks about exactly where we want it. We're right in the X-ring. I'm gonna take one more shot just to make sure. There you have it from start to finish, opening the box to sight it in, the Turbo M1 from 10 point. It's a 380 feet per second crossbow, nine inches axle to axle in the cocked position. Now you're getting into the good price point with that compact limb design. You can get it with the AccuDraw 50 sled for $899 or with the AccuDraw crank system for $9.99. You can find it at crossbowexpert.com. And remember, this year for 2019, with the purchase of a crossbow in the case, we will give you the option for complete assembly. We can cite it in for you before we ship it out. Check us out, it's crossbowexpert.com.